Isn't this beautiful? I'm making a video about the most recent addition to my antiques collection. It's also one of the smallest additions to my antiques collection. I picked this up about a month ago and uh, I spent a very long time restoring it and obsessing over it. And uh, what we have here is a very nice early 20th century pen knife or folding slip joint pocket knife. This knife was made in the German town of Solingen, uh, and it was manufactured by the Wusthof Knife Company. Uh, if you know anything about knives, then you may be aware that Wusthof is still around. Um, it has been around now for just over 200 years, and it is still owned and operated by the original Wusthof family. Uh, still based in Solingen. So this is obviously a uh, knife of some considerable quality. I picked this up at an antiques fair that I went to one month ago, uh, almost exactly to the day one month ago, and I bought it there from an acquaintance of mine because I liked the size. It's a nice, small, medium-sized pocket knife. It was in very uh, battered condition when I got it, and the uh, whole the whole general condition of the knife was just worn out. It needed a lot of work, but I bought it because I liked it. It was beautiful. I loved the mother of pearl uh, scales on the sides of the handle, and like I said, I liked the size and the weight and the balance of the knife. So I'll just uh, show you around it. So like I said, this is a pen knife, uh, which is a type of folding pocket knife, uh, which has two blades. So what we have here is the main blade, and then tucked away in here, we have, let's see if I can yank it out, Yeah. We have the smaller blade, which is the pen blade. The pen blade was exactly what it sounds like. The smaller pen blade was for carving, cutting, shaping quills, uh, quill pens, and for sharpening pencils, uh, back in the days when the modern pencil sharpener did not exist. The scales are made of mother of pearl, or oyster shell, and the bolsters at the end are of nickel silver. The liners inside, as you can see, are brass, and the back spring is steel. The blades themselves are carbon steel and are punched with the Wusthof brand and trademark of the Trident. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Now, it took me a very long time to restore this knife. Um, if you've ever bought a pocket knife secondhand at a flea market or an antique shop or something, um, one thing you'll notice almost at once is that the knives are very stiff, very blunt, very hard to open, uh, sometimes even harder to close. and the reason for that is because when most people buy pocket knives, they buy them, they use them, and they never look after them. And that is why um, it took me just so long to overhaul this knife. So what did I have to do to restore it? I had to do, I had to do a lot. Um, the first thing to do was to open up the blades, fill up this trench in the middle with oil. Um, I use sewing machine oil in all my restorations and repairs. Uh, it's nice and slippery, 
it's uh, odorless, which is good, and uh, it's pretty cheap. So, you know, a small bottle will last you quite a while. And so basically, the first thing to do was to clean out all the gunk inside the knife. So I opened the blades, filled, it up, filled up the knife with the oil, and I was using cotton buds, tissues, all that kind of stuff to scrape and rub all the stuff that was inside here. And there's a lot in there. And then once that was done, I had to lubricate the pivots and spring. The pivots are these things here, right in there. That's one, and the other pivot is in there. And the spring is this bar down the back. This is the spring, this is the back spring. And when you get a knife as old as this, you know, 80, 90 years old, it's very, 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 very common for the pivots, the joints, the springs to be absolutely clogged with dust, lint, grime, pocket fluff, dead skin, hair, uh, all kinds of stuff. And unless you're going to pull the knife apart right down to its component pieces, it's very difficult to clean and it takes ages. The only way to clean it is to continually flood the knife with oil and open and close the blades hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And what that does is that the oil and the opening and closing of the blades and the action of the spring flushes out all the gunk and grime inside the knife. As you work the blades, as you work the spring, uh, you can get a folded sheet of like a paper towel or something and fold it up, put it on the table, press the knife on top of it and just rub it back and forth like this. Put your weight on it and press it and rub it. And you will be revolted and disgusted and appalled at the black grime that will come out of your knife. And that is the grime that has been flushed out by the oil, by all the movements of the blades, of the movements of the springs. This is the grime that is causing your knife to jam. This is why it doesn't open properly. This is why it doesn't close properly. This is why you break your nails when you try and open your knife. Because the grime inside the spring, inside the liners, inside the pivots, creates so much friction that you can't open your knife. Now, this knife, the action is nice and smooth. You can see it, you know, the spring is nice and strong and it snaps shut nice and clean. And uh, it opens nice and easy. I can't do it with one hand, but it does open very nice and very smoothly. And that's because I managed to remove all the grime that was inside, trapped inside all these little layers of metal. Uh, and the, that's the only way to do it, to fill it with oil and to rub it and rub it and rub it on tissue paper or toilet paper to leach all the grime out through capillary action. Um, an ultrasonic cleaner is useless, it won't do anything because an ultrasonic cleaner can't get into all these little uh, nooks and crannies. So the only way to do it is to spend literally days, I spent two or three weeks doing this, it takes ages. Uh, persistence is the only thing that will get it clean. Once it was properly clean, uh, the next thing to do was to sharpen the blades. When it came to sharpening the blades on this particular knife, there was a real uh, issue in that there was a chip in the blade. And uh, the problem was I had to remove it. There's no point in sharpening a blade when there's a chip and trying to sharpen around the chip because all that's going to do is when you try and cut something with the knife, that chip is going to catch on whatever it is you're cutting and it's going to rip it or tear it or, God forbid, the entire knife blade snaps in half. So to remove the chip, I had a very coarse uh, sharpening stone and I was just sawing the blade back and forth like this, grinding down the metal, millimeter by millimeter by millimeter until I got down to the level of the chip, uh, right from the bottom of the chip to the top, remove the whole thing, and then from there I just had to sharpen the blade as you would with any knife. Uh, so that was relatively easy. 
That said, it was the first time I'd ever done it. Then once you've finished uh, cleaning out the knife, getting the action nice and smooth, sharpening the blades, then the next stage is polishing the knife. And this can be a lot of fun uh, if you know how to do it properly. And uh, so what I did was I polished the blade. You can see it's nice and glossy now. Not as perfect as it would be when it was brand new, but still, it's, it's pretty good. So basically, polishing the knife involves polishing the blade, polishing the spine, uh, polishing the shank here, uh, polishing the liners, the back spring, the other blade here, and if you want to, you can even polish the mother of pearl. So what you do is you just dab a bit of oil on the mother of pearl, you get very, very fine sandpaper, or very, very, very fine steel wool, or brasser, or uh, silver polish, something like that, and you just rub it across, just rub it across, and then buff it smooth with a tissue paper or something like that, and it comes out really glossy. I mean, you can see how reflective this is here. Just look at how reflective that is. Just catching the light, shimmering. And the results speak for themselves. It's a very beautiful, elegant, antique folding pocket knife. And I just love it. It's a good size. It's not too big. It's not tiny. Um, I can use it for all kinds of things. And it doesn't look like one of those bland, um, over-the-top tactical knives that you can buy in those, you know, outdoor camping, hunting stores that you have these days. It's just a nice, simple, everyday carry, everyday use uh, antique pocket knife. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I hope that you will like, comment, uh, possibly visit my blog. If you decide to visit my blog, then there's a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoy it.